Hey there everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now today I'm going to be discussing a very important and crucial question that I get quite often out there and that is how to become an iOS developer. Now in this video you will get the entire process of becoming an iOS developer, what are the problems, the easy ways and all these things and I'll be completely honest with you in this movie. I won't be selling any of my courses, my boot camps or anything just complete honest scenario how you can start to become an iOS developer because becoming an iOS developer is far more good than any other mobile application developer. Yes, they are good, but the payments in the iOS development is quite high nowadays. Uh, this is the present scenario. It might change in the future, but right now the iOS development is far more uh, expensive as compared to the other developments. So it's good. People are getting much more money in the iOS development. Okay, so how does the process starts to become an iOS developer? Now, this is the process that I would like to show you, but obviously there are some exceptions. Let's not talk about them. So the very first thing that I would like to suggest all of you to before be becoming an iOS developer is to get friendly with the iOS environment. Uh, you might be having an Android phone or a Windows phone or maybe Ubuntu phone, but if you want to develop some apps for iPhone, then the environment should be very friendly with you. First of all, it's really, really required. A lot of people say that it's not compulsory to have an iPhone with you. I say that, yes, it's not compulsory to have an iPhone, but you should be completely familiar with how the screen looks like, how the segues are moved, how the app transition happens from one screen to another screen and how the permission pop-up looks like and how, how the segues actually move on and a lot of things like that. So that you can understand the feel and the polished look that Apple is trying to give in each application. Without that, you might be able to design that, but, but that's, is, that is not going to be a great app. So first of all, familiarization with the iOS environment is very much important out there. The next thing that you might want to have is a Mac operating system. Now you can have a Mac mini, a MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, uh, maybe iMac or anything like that, but it's required and it's really compulsory out there to release your apps in the iOS app store. And a lot of people will say that you can go on and work on with the virtual environment, virtual machines, some online virtualizations and can uh, work on with that. You can also work with the Hackintosh and all of that, but that's not gonna work, believe me. You can work on the Hackintosh, but at the time when uh, your apps might want to get released out there, you will for sure require uh, a Macintosh out there. So go ahead and the easiest option is a Mac mini because you get a fusion drive, good amount of RAM, good amount of hard disk. It's, it's obviously a great choice for the beginners. So I started my development with the Mac mini and it's a great piece of uh, hardware. You might want to get that. But in case you are having MacBook Pro or Mac mini or MacBook Air or iMac, whatever, it's gonna work. So make sure that you have that. Okay, so that's requirement number two. Now, once you will get started with the familiarization and it's done, then you can move on to the development phase. Now, obviously, uh, the language that you might want to learn for the iOS development is Swift, not Objective-C now, because I expect you are starting right now, not before that. And uh, you might want to get familiarized with the Swift. But designing an iOS app is a little bit tricky process. Although you might be working in some company or uh, maybe like that, but if you're looking for freelancer, the number one step is to design your app, not to code your app. So you might want to take a piece of paper or maybe a pencil, pen, whatever you like to have, and on the piece of paper, just design just a rough, rough sketch of your app. That this is gonna be my flash screen, this is gonna be my first screen, then when a person taps on this, then I can tap move on to this guy. Uh, then my image will look like this. Then my app will look like this image and things like that. So make sure that you have a rough sketch onto your piece of paper. That is really, really important. Otherwise, if you'll just madly go out and uh, simply just will be coding on the Xcode, it's not gonna work ever because you will be confused. What should I do? What, what is my next step? So obviously the piece of paper is still required. Okay. Once that is done, then you might want to hire a designer or if you are already a designer working with a Photoshop or Sketch or maybe some other tools like that, you might want to design the interface for your app. 
how the login screens would look like, the sign up buttons, uh, the forms where you can fill up the emails and passwords and all these things. How does it look like when the users turn on, uh, click on the sign up button, how the next screen will move and will look like and all these things. There is a good app out there, Sketch, which I do like, most of the iOS developer like. You might want to get started with that in case you're working on the freelancer. Otherwise, you can hire a designer as well. No big deal. And there, there is a Envision website on which you can just upload all of these images and can simulate that how your app will look like on a real device in your hand or maybe on the simulators as well. Now, once that process is done, then you might want to move on to the Swift and design a few cool apps like Hello World. And that is going to be a good scenario of... Uh, getting friendly with the iOS design. Then a uh, good knowledge of the Swift is required, but don't focus too much on the Swift because Swift is just a way to how to process the loops, how to process the functions and all these things. A lot of functions and things are already pre-written by the Apple. So you might want to get friendly with that. Like for example, uh, the date picker view or the picker view, how we can implement them, what are the required functions, what is the protocols and all these things, you know. So once you get friendly with that, then just complete your app and in a polished manner. All the images should be there, all the graphic designs and everything. Make sure that you don't forget to export all of your images into 1x, 2x and 3x, it is required. And read the HIG as well, the human interface guideline by the Apple so that you can design best possible icons and can fix the widths and heights of all the images and everything onto a best possible manner according to the Apple guideline, the human interface guideline. Okay, now once your app is ready, make sure that you play with it for at least uh, a day or a couple of day or in case you have some family members or friends, just pass on your apps uh, by taking your uh, taking their mobile phone and installing that app directly out there. Now it's possible in the Xcode 8 to just pass on the app into any iPhone or iPad just like that. So make sure that you play it for a couple of days and then the final thing comes up is registering for an account for a license and it's paid it's right now a $99 for a year and it's not much because you're gonna earn quite a lot uh, if you just release a lot of apps in the App Store so it's not heavy but this is a barrier that Apple has deliberately created so that uh, the rubbish app don't come in because if a person is spending $99 for the app for sure he's very serious about that and he wants to release the polished and the perfect app out there so once you have applied for the license, it usually take uh, sometimes one day, sometimes seven days. So between a week, just expect that the license is going to come up. And thereafter, uh, you will be writing provisioning, certificates. That's easy process. And you can just release your app store. Then Apple gives you a separate platform on which you can track your analytics, your downloads, your reviews, and a lot of things like that. So this is an entire process of becoming an iOS developer. I hope the video was quite interesting and uh, gave you a little bit of knowledge as well. In case you want me to discuss about something others as well, do let me know. It's always fun to talk on the YouTube and thumbs up for the video, subscribe to my channel and I'll be waiting for your comments below the video.